You know, seeing Magical Musketeer topping a regional is one of the most refreshing things I've had the chance to see. Make sure you guys smash the subscribe button on that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. You know, looking at a regional breakdown like this, where we have a lot of you bell in the top cut, I, I'm always intrigued with this because you, you look at certain regions and you'll see hardly any you bell present at all. And then you'll kind of blink back again and you'll be like, huh, you know, where, where did all this you bell come from for, for this region? You go to another region and you're like, wow. Ubel is not performing at all. And this is one of those cases of we have three Ubel decks in the top cut here, and it didn't even win the regional, which is really telling, actually, of the meta, and I like that a lot. Now, we also had one Snake Eyes version in the top cut, very, very standard approach to this meta. You know, as long as this deck is still lurking around here in the shadows, it's still going to be doing its thing. And then we have the power of Centurion. Yes, good old basic Centurion doing what it needs to out here, showcasing that the, the deck's level 12 synchro pool is still as ignorant as it's ever been. No real change there. And we also have Mermails. Now, <laughs> surprise, Mermails actually won this event, which I think is one of the craziest things that we could have actually had happen out here. Um, I, <laughs> honestly, a, a Mermail shakeup in a format where, like, Shifter is so relevant is kind of crazy to me. And, of course, we also have this Magical Musketeer Unchained pile back here actually kind of doing some work. And, you know, overall looking at this regional, Ubel Infestation, pretty good. Snake Eyes got some sort of representation. You know, Rescue Ace is our offbeat rogue challenger next to Mermail and Magical Musketeers. And to see other things actually coming into the light out here and challenging this, I think is a very good indicator that our meta is just not as bad as people make it out to be. Let's pass on over to Deckless. So starting things off here, we have our Mermail Challenger. And uh, the first thing you're going to notice here... Where's my, where's my Abyss Megalo? Where, no, no Abyss Megalo. We don't need Megalo. Uh, Megalo, I, I swear, has been needed in this deck's evolution. And this build just goes, nah, you don't need to worry about that, actually. Like, there's no real point in going after Megalo. Now, I also find this pretty interesting. We're actually doing Triple Abyss Hine. Now, uh, looking at Abyss Hine and the way that this card has, most builds have played two of this, and most builds have played two Deep Sea Minstrel. I'm gonna be honest with you here. I do value the Minstrel as a three of, because getting that hand knowledge of your opponent, problem is your opponents, just, if they have a Mulch Army, they're just gonna chain it anyway, and then you're just gonna look at them and you're gonna go, wow, thanks, man. I certainly do love me some Yu-Gi-Mons. And then, you know, you're just able to rip nothing off of it. That, that's the only bad scenario that this card really actively has right now that really, you know, kind of takes away from it. Also, one board clear. We are playing the Coil Camp, which is fine. But then we have this very cool interactive piece down here. We are actually playing a Magical Spring down here as a three of. I've uh, I've heard people kind of talking about Magical Spring's return back to the meta, but this is the first deck to actually make use and show an actual application with this, which is really cool. I also see that we have the Mizuzuchi down here as well, you know, the, uh, the, the spell card that can negate Super Poly because it's really cool in the way that it works. This build also supporting off Dominus Impulses to punish the opponent, but outside of that, you know, we have no out in here for Shifter. There's no cross outs. We have foregone any sort of involvement with that, and I think that's very, very interesting. Uh, it proves that in a format, if, you know, mother people are just kind of skipping away from this, I mean, there's no Tempi also present in this top cut, so that's a major thing. Okay. We also have this magical musketeer pile here. Now, for everything that we have developed and understand about Magical Musketeers, uh, this deck is essentially an evolved form of Fiend Toolbox, actually, which is pretty interesting to think about. So, I mean, obviously Fenrir is going to be your special summon, plop it on the field, go get an extra copy of itself, load up for what you need to do. The Fiendsmith stuff is going to get Desiree or Aerial Eater loaded on up into your field here, so that you can start to have a boss monster interact with your opponent. But you've also got to remember the Magical Musketeer cards are meant to generate some interesting resources. Now, what I also find interesting about this is there is not a single 
spell or trap card in here that meets the requirements for the Magical Musketeer stuff. Actually, they're using the Magical Musketeer stuff as stepping stones to extend out the Fiend Toolbox more so than anything, because when Magical Musketeer rolls on into Max, Max then gets you the ability to special summon some more friends from the deck, and then, of course, you roll on into the Requiem, and then you've just you, you've, you've put the extra bodies on the field. You've met those requirements to have the extra extenders, and that's pretty good. Now, obviously, you do see some more of this Unchained package in here. Uh, well, the Unchained package is actually pretty, pretty thoroughly expanded. You know, going with all the prisons, the one Shavara with one Shyama, two Arua, and uh, one Sarama, and then one Escape and two Abominable. You've got all of this laid out for you very, very nicely. And I like that. I also see we're playing an Elder Entity. Uh, we've also got Malong down here as well. And we're also playing copies of Ultimate Slayer to clean up those problematic cards that your opponent's going to kind of leave around on the field for you. But... I like this. I like this a lot. There's a lot of ingenuity going on in this build. A lot more than I think people are going to be giving it credit for. That's really good. Now, we have uh, some uh, Ubel innovations down here. Now, as it stands right now, Ubel has been dialing itself on back out of the power creep. Uh, this is also the build that made top eight. We don't have the for, or the second place or the top four list. Um, this was all that was available. So this might not even be the most optimal list. But I do find the little choices in builds like this to be interesting. We're playing one single one Fuluas in here. Why? Well, I mean, it's not because it's a cross out target. It's not because it's one of those things. It's one of those things of we have the one, we see it, we're good to go. If not, well, shit, you know, it's just a dead draw if we happen to see it. That, that's all all this card does all right it is its purpose generates its advantage and it goes Peruli is the major one down here that was definitely the MVP out of this because you bell just wants to you know dark beckoning beast hey look two summons out of the hand I'll take a draw two off of my Perulia well don't mind if I do Dolist. I love me some card advantage I also do see the draw and lockbirds down here honestly we've kind of reached that point right now that draws kind of a uh, a much better card. And I, I kind of like that a lot. You know, just for some pre-advantage here. I also do see, hello Metaltronus, how are you? More and more decks out here have been finding the cute little ways to kind of explore the Metal Tronus interactions and see the best way that they can take advantage of their opponent's interactions. And I, I think that's fine, honestly. You want Metal Tronus to be that tech choice that leads you to that victory spot that your opponent's just like, huh, you know, what am I supposed to do about this? Uh, not much, actually. Uh, this card is very, very, very solid. Uh, outside of that, everything else for this list checks out there's nothing too crazy with this deck and you know what you like a little bit of consistency on your plate i love me some basic u bell and then our last list here is rescue ace with deception oh boy so we've reached the point out here that now even rescue ace is adapting the oh we can search for Rosalago, do the wanted plays, and we can go into Sylvia, and then you know we got the the negates up and running, and your opponent's just like oh boy this is so fun yeah, welcome to a four card splash package that really any deck can play now unfortunately. TCG hasn't found out yet that you can tech the Deception Spoils package into a lot of things. I've seen Japan testing out weird things like Madolche with this package, and it actually works out, which is. <laughs> kind of nutty in and in itself, um, which is another problem. Uh, you do with that what you will. Um, outside of that, I mean, your rescue ace ratios, I, I think, look fine in here. You know, th this list is looking pretty solid. I, I know a lot of people kind of didn't want to mess around with rescue ace. Um, Dominus Impulse is also an incredibly stupid card in this deck. All right, trust me when I say this. A uh, hand trap that literally denies your opponent really playing the game? Pretty good. Also, yield threatening roar to pull off of the thrust to laugh at your opponent so that you don't lose the game. Also feeling pretty good. Also, the one-off copy of Reinforce in here. Also very, very solid. So, that is everything we have out of the Toronto, Ontario Regional for you. But, I mean, Mermail's taking down a W out here. Seeing some of the Magical Musketeer Fiend Toolbox in another light, I think is very, very interesting. You know, there's a lot of innovation happening. This format is not looking anywhere near as bad as people thought it was going to be. So please, if comment down below, tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons!
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.